Welcome back to Brazil Crypto Report. Today, we talked to Leandro Pereira, who's head of growth for LATAM at Paysafe. We talked about the intersection of payments, blockchain, and crypto in the region, as well as a DeFi for Charity project that he co-founded. Great. So we're here with Leandro Pereira from Paysafe. Leandro, thanks so much. Great to have you on the show. Hey, man. Thanks. Thanks for the, the invite and uh, second try. Huh? Yeah. Let's see if, uh, if yeah, it works we, now. We, yeah, we, had a, we, had an, we did this uh, a great episode back at Ethereum Rio, but uh, the, too bad the audio didn't work. So it uh, didn't, uh, didn't really work. Yeah. Anyway, so here we are. Take two. Uh, we're going to do it better this time. And uh, so to get started, yeah. why don't you just tell us a bit about yourself and your journey into crypto and Web3. So um, it's it's a long story, but like let's try to to get short. Huh? Uh, so I'm in technology for my whole life since I was like a kid. You know, like if we we go back in time, it's almost forty years now. It's it's a long road. Uh, professionally, probably around like thirty. Uh, so I started with crypto actually back in 2013-14 but not actually working with it. So I was like doing other the things, uh, uh, but I was always like paying attention about like this movement and what what was actually more interesting for me in all this was actually the infrastructure, you know, the possibility of building things on top of like blockchains. So in 2018, actually, I started actually uh, looking deeper on that. So trying to find a real use case for like a business, a business I had uh, on IoT. So how we could use blockchain, you know, to improve certain uh, uh, features we had in, in this uh, solution. Uh, to use uh, blockchain actually to record, you know, information in an immutable way uh, to get like a, a easier audit service, you know, uh, using uh what blockchain offers, uh, pretty much because of the immutability. So on that time, I started looking to that, and 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 you know, you you go from one thing to another. You start actually uh, deep diving in the technology. You start to like know people, uh, see use cases, and and I didn't stop since then. So since two thousand eighteen, end of two thousand eighteen, uh, to now, I'm actually pretty much 100% of my time working with blockchain and, and, and crypto. Uh, I don't like to say Web3 too much because I I honestly don't believe we are there yet, but we are on the way of uh, building things that can bring more you know, privacy, more transparency, uh, and actually adding value to, to, to all this um, but uh, this yeah, web two component, I think that's is, is that's strong. a fair that's a fair assessment. I think I, I think that's it's uh, the web three does seem it's it's just become more of like a marketing term that has it's kind of void of any meaning, right? Uh, and it's it's like anyway, but it's it's no not to derail your your story here, but it's a fair point. Like I think yeah, yeah. so uh, two thousand actually two thousand twenty during the pandemics, uh, I. I actually had more time uh, to to study to uh, to think out of the box what what we can actually build here. Uh, so I started doing some consulting uh, and started like joining some some projects on that time related to crypto, to launchpads and and tokenization especially. Uh, so I didn't stop. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I usually say that there is like kind of bug, you know, like once it bites you, 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 you jump into this, this market, you jump into this technology, you, you, if, if you really want to build something serious, uh, you, you don't, you, you just don't leave anymore. You, like we stay there. And 2000, uh, early 2022, I, I end up like working for Hathor. Uh, Hato is a layer one blockchain uh, founded by Brazilians, uh, which is like really interesting uh, technology. It's easy to use. 
uh, it's easy to build on top of Hatter. And I was already using Hatter in some projects I was involved with uh, for like tokenization, cross border, uh, you know, uh, dApps. And I worked with Hatter until this year. And like in April, I joined PaySafe. Uh, PaySafe is a payment, traditional payment company, you know, Web2. Uh, but as everybody in this space, you know, they like watching this crypto movements uh, and actually how, how blockchain can add value to, to the current uh, solutions they offer, you know, basically on like payments. And I'm in this uh, digital wallets area, you know, looking after Latam. Uh, where we have like multiple verticals and like one of these are the crypto payments. So how can we add a crypto as a, you know, an extra stack on top of what we already have? Great. Um, why don't you talk a bit more just for folks who may not be familiar, talk a bit more about just what is like the business model of PaySafe? Um, you know, what type of solutions you guys have? And um, maybe just go into a bit more detail on specifically what your role is uh, in in sort of overseeing um, the, the digital wallet wallet product in Latin America. So we have uh, we have pretty much uh, payment infrastructure, okay, and wallets. So uh, we we have like solutions for alternative payment methods, for example, uh, where you can connect uh, using like single APIs. Okay, to our payment networks, we have cards, you know, uh, prepaid cards, uh, debit cards, uh, on top of like the solutions we offer. Uh, we also have like this crypto payments uh, stack where we can do like on-off ramps. Uh, we can integrate with like existing wallets, but we can also we also offer like a, a crypto trading, uh, a crypto payments in our products. Like we have uh, uh, two wallets which are a very popular on the gambling and, and i gaming uh, uh, like market it's uh, screw and net teller uh, so we're now in the process actually of building you know this uh, new uh, payment methods new payment infrastructure uh, on top of all this so uh, it's a journey of like discovery you know, it's uh, uh, to actually understand where we can be, be better positioned on this. You know, like uh, one thing that I think we we uh, we are looking closely is how can we differentiate for what everybody else you know uh, is doing. And but at the end of the day, it's it's to add more value on what we have because like crypto payments are still like a small market. You know. Uh, but this business has a lot to grow, you know, uh, and especially the digital wallets business. Uh, digital wallets business are, are gaining like a lot of market, market especially in, La in Latin America and Brazil. You know, uh, we see this transition of like cash use, you know, and not even like credit cards to actually digital wallets payments, you know, so uh we we believe that we need to be prepared for all this change great great and um and maybe just talk a bit about like what types of client what do your clients look like like what types of institutions are you um are you guys you know building partnerships with or or, or are your prospective clients i mean it could be just in the region or just generally for for this type of product um like who is who has who is sort of your target market here who are you looking to be uh uh sort of partnering with so from from the digital wallet side, we like I said, we already very strong on the gambling uh, uh, industry. So we provide a lot of uh, payment infrastructure uh, for gambling, you know, websites, I gaming too. So it's uh, it's pretty much the market we are used to to work. Okay, but out of that, you, like we are talking about crypto, you know, you you have an, a, a whole new world to explore. Not only for payments, you know, using crypto as like means of payment, uh, but you can explore, explore, for example, the cross-border part. Uh, you can integrate like these crypto payments because most of this gambling and gaming, uh, high gaming industry is also moving to it. You know, you see a lot of like gambling, gaming websites uh, uh, 
playing in this space, you know, start accepting cryptocurrencies, you know, stable coins and all that. And it's, it's like I said, there are two sides, you know, the B2C where we have the wallets that like the, the end consumer actually uh, uh, downloads and, and loads cash or buy crypto and, and, and do the transactions from the wallet. And we also have the integration with like this, you know, uh, uh, enterprise uh, from e-commerce, you know, uh, payments, uh, payments uh, institutions, uh, their gambling, uh, you know, iGaming, it's basically that. And there is a big trend now, especially in the crypto space for this uh, assets, gaming assets, you know, business. So this is also something that we are looking at it to explore. Yeah, I, I find it interesting the intersection between uh, like the iGaming, uh, internet casino world, and 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 crypto. And and there's, I mean, I realize this is a crypto podcast, not a gambling or you know casino podcast, but uh, there is a lot of overlap in terms of uh, just the types of services that have to be provided here, uh, and obviously payments, whether they be fiat or crypto. Um, you know, kind of retail onboarding retail users, and then obviously on on the kind of the, the enterprise B two B side, like these casinos have to be able to basically move the funds, you know, uh, to to various other locations, et cetera, uh, in or out of the country. I was actually at this, uh, I believe it was like the AIBC conference that they had in Sao Paulo mm -hmm. a few months ago, maybe maybe a month or two ago, and um, I guess I went to it thinking it was a crypto conference. I was speaking there, and then I get there and it was like all like iGaming stuff. <laughs> I was a little shocked. I was like, oh wow, I didn't realize this was such a big thing um and and i was, they, I was kind of they, uh, they are all looking at this space like if, yeah. you, if you see uh but a lot of like of this uh services websites etc they they looking as uh, an infrastructure too you know they're not looking actually as as a, another payment method you know another payment possibility but right, also right. how blockchain you know and and crypto can can improve what they do. Yeah, well, and, and, it, and it, it and it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense because these um, these are kind of, I guess, these would be sort of considered, you know, kind of like high risk businesses in the sense where, like, you know, tr the you know the correspondent banking system isn't, may not, you know, these types of payments probably have a higher risk of getting like blocked or getting uh, uh, not not fully being processed through the existing financial infrastructure, just because these these types of transactions can be considered higher risk than maybe other types of transactions. So obviously, um, you know, a blockchain-based payment infrastructure with fewer intermediaries, fewer choke points, fewer points of failure uh, is obviously something that's of interest there. Um, so I, I was pretty interested. I was, I was, I, I didn't realize there was such a such a big intersection between these two worlds. And and maybe just to kind of stay on this subject, just because I know in Brazil we've had uh, there's some new rules coming into place around regulating yeah. online gambling and sports betting. And and as far as I know, this has been this has obviously been happening for a while. This, these types of casinos are available, and they're sponsoring. You know, every football team has like a you know Betfair, you know, at, like uh, uh, like branding. Yeah, they, and everything. they. I think they're sponsoring like ninety percent of like the the teams in Brazil. You know, like yeah, it's, it's, betting is, it's everywhere. Huge, it's know? everywhere. Uh, and and if you see like the, the other countries in Latin America, it's pretty much the same trend, you know, like Colombia now just prove it uh, something related to that. Argentina is looking at it. Uh, so I think it it's it's uh, it's the trend, you know, that it will be regulated, you know. Uh, and we are also like looking at it, you know, like how can we actually uh, uh, do you know this business here uh with this new regulation uh stack coming in so uh, yeah so there are lots of you know points that you need to connect you know we we just had a call in the morning about like something about that and and like the the the, the more questions you bring more the more more comes after you know like you right you, you, you come to a meeting with like 10 questions and you leave with like 20 you know and, and <laughs> uh, because it's uh it's a lot you need to connect you know it's not i i don't think it's a technology uh problem you know it's not a a, a technology challenge it's it's more on the you know regulatory uh, compliance you know, and all the things that uh, we need to adjust and adapt uh, to play in this in this field uh, properly. Yeah? 
because yeah. like once regulation the uh, once the regulations come in, in Brazil, for example, uh, all this all these websites, all these this companies, they will have to apply for a license here. Or, you know, you 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 cannot market. You know, you cannot like sponsor. You cannot uh, do a lot of things. So we also need to understand how we're gonna be positioned. Right. Right. So, so you're in, in the space that you're operating in, then you've got regulation coming in Brazil on these two fronts, right? There's obviously crypto regulation. Yeah, crypto and gambling. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's gambling regulation coming in as well. And, and you guys have to be paying sort of equal attention to both of these things because that's, that's, um, you know, you you have core, core verticals and, and, you know, there's a lot of overlap between these two verticals for you, essentially. You, it, like I said, you know, you have a lot of like this, these dots that you need to connect and and things they must be built uh, in parallel you know like they like when you look at like product roadmaps uh, you sometimes you have like the, the feature the product ready but you cannot launch because it's tied to something else that you still need like some regulatory uh, clearance you know like you, you still need some license you know, uh, we're looking at all this because, like, Latin America in general has a huge potential. You know, like if you see Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, you know, Colombia, uh, they are huge markets. So it's uh, it's a lot of work to do. Man. It's, it's a yeah, lot, a lot to yeah to check. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then, so this is sort of your responsibility. Then is really over. You're trying to you're trying to figure out the strategy for all these different countries, and um, you know all these uh, kind of what is your you know, what is kind of the go to market, what is the growth strategy, um, and then trying to understand the different nuances yeah. in each of these countries essentially, and finding the sweet spot for okay, what's the technology that we offer, and how does this sort of fit into the local uh, environment? Uh, yeah, partnerships are very important. You know, because like uh, I'm new to the payment industry, you know, like uh, we, I never had like that much exposure like I'm having on, on PaySafe. And one thing that I that I understood is that uh, everybody works with everybody at the end of the day, you know, like we, uh, we have like a, a strong competition, but uh, all, all the players, they somehow uh are connected to each other you know to, to make sure that this service you know works for example if you if you look at the apms the alternative payment methods uh, that we offer we have uh pretty much uh the cash services and everything that it's not credit card and card uh that we offer all over latin america okay payings and payouts uh, you need to independently make these partnerships with like banks, other fintechs sometimes, you know, that they can provide a service for you in one country and you can provide your service in another, you know. So we we, we need to, to work very close uh, to this partnership model, you know. We need to, to understand uh, uh, what are also the, the partners uh that we can we can use for services that we are planning for i don't know six months one year you know it's uh, there's a lot of like mid long term visibility on that you know it's it's not like what we can do now and and it, you you going back to crypto now when i started the company i was pretty much looking at crypto but then i i realized and a lot of other people in the company that uh we had to align this scope with other verticals, you know, for example, gambling, uh, high gaming, you know, and we had to, we, we need, we need to find a way to put, put all this together, you know, because it all goes to one product, you know, it's one backbone at the end of the day. So I think the biggest challenge now is actually to, to make sure that all these integrations, they are successful. And that all these uh, legal requirements are, you know, are in place, and because we we play by the book, so we we need to do. <laughs> Sometimes we, we we need we need to wait, you know, uh, because uh, th there's not enough clarity of what wh right. we need, you know. Right, it's right, like, right, right. Ah, let we won't be the first. I think, like for this space, to be the first. Sometimes it's. It's actually bad.
Yeah, you don't really want. You, you, it's, yeah. sometimes it's better. It's better to be the follower sometimes, right? Uh, or yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, and maybe maybe aside and from. We other, no, sorry. sorry it's, we have other solutions. For example, we have a company that we acquired like a few years ago. It's a income access that it's pretty much like uh, uh, works with like influencers, you know, and affiliates. Mm. So we have some other businesses that they they orbit around like all this payment infrastructure we have, you know. So out of like the wallets and the ATMs and you know the cards, we we need to see how can we we offer, you know, all this the solutions in the region. So uh, sometimes launching one isolated product that doesn't help, you know, the launch of something else we we need to put together so it's quite complex right right it goes yeah to your earlier point of like there's just a lot of dots you have to connect here um on this uh, on these topics and, and with this particular business model right and, and then you have to kind of thread the needle through uh the right partners and then through the right sort of legal structure and then you know obviously getting um and you're kind of doing a lot of this on you know obviously like sort of through traditional finance you know trad fi infrastructure as well there's a certain degree of integration there so there's a lot of sort of needles that have to be threaded i suppose um and may maybe aside from uh like what are some other aside from like the the, the gambling and like the i gaming vertical like what are some other verticals that you're uh you're you're really focusing on um Maybe they could be. I guess they could be crypto native or otherwise. But like, what what are some other sort of um, areas that you're really you're trying to to build more? Uh, uh, the you know, the main the main focus. I think the main focus today, and uh, like, I, it's not the focus, but the main opportunity now. I believe it's on on crypto and, and and gaming. You know. Okay. Like there are some some space that we could have a, a compatible offering compare it to other like wallets and, and competitors. Uh, but it's not maybe where we can deliver the best experience now, you know? So sure. uh, I truly believe that the crypto space, especially uh, for, for payments, together with the iGaming, you know, and the gambling. And out of gambling, I game, you still have like the gaming, you know, because they are quite different things. Right, uh, right. When you, see, like, when you say like gambling, you, you're speaking about like betting, sports betting and, and you know, uh, uh, casinos and, and all this. When you say about high gaming, you, you, you're pretty much uh, speaking about games. People bet in the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah and yeah. You, have, you have also like the gaming uh, uh, market which is huge that I think it will have like a very fast adoption to uh, web tree you know to 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 blockchain use uh, like I said uh, this gaming assets you know uh, they, there's people already like building solutions but they not like fully integrated with like the gaming uh, studios and all this. Some gaming studios are already like paying attention on this too. So this this ends up becoming also a huge opportunity because if you put all together, it comes to payment again. You know, right? So it's all about like exchanging value, uh, uh, transacting. You know, so that's that's our core. So uh, I see a, a, a big growth. Like I think a lot of people. Uh, in this in this segment is uh, understood this already, you know that like crypto uh, can be a, a a big enabler, you know, for existing uh, uh, markets for existing uh, uh, applications. We see, you know, to use the the blockchain uh, to to actually improve, you know, the experience. Because yeah, again, yeah. the experience is the problem today in Web three and uh, blockchain crypto. Yeah, uh, I think UX, you know, is the is the biggest challenge for all of us. And then, I mean, maybe maybe it would be helpful. I think at least for me to help me just wrap my head around around this, and probably hopefully for listeners as well. But um, especially because I've never worked in payments, I've I've only used payments as you know a consumer. I've never like kind of worked in this industry. I don't really know all the how the plumbing works and whatnot. But what would be, you know, in 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 your how, how would you describe maybe the difference between like the solution that you guys are offering 
um, if you're you're you know you're incorporating blockchain based payment rails, you're incorporating crypto um, versus like if I'm just going through your standard. Say, say I'm running, I'm running like an iGaming business of some sort, and I'm I'm using just standard payment rails, sort of correspondent banking, TradFi payment rails, and I'm having all these issues of you know nobody wants to bank me, and or nobody, all these payment processors are like blocking my transactions because there's you know there's they're, they're, they're being flagged as high risk or, or whatever it might be, whatever it, like like there's a multitude of pain points there. Um, but how how does a solution like PaySafe really like improve that? Um, additional value beyond the, the current alternative, essentially. Yeah, but you, you have to go to compliance too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah right, right. Uh, but like, let's talk about the solution. You, you, you. For example, in Latin America, we can offer uh, multiple payment uh, methods in local currency. Uh, with, for example, a single API, you can have uh, your business here in Brazil. And you want to say sell, you know, in local currency in Peru, in Argentina, in Colombia, but you don't don't actually need to do this, you know, local partnerships. We can provide you that. So your customer in Peru can pay with solids, your customer in Colombia with pesos, and you receive this money here in reais. You know, so we do this. Uh, it's it's a cross border transaction, but like we provide you this. Uh, local payment methods, you know, uh, all over Latin America, for example. We also have this in, in Europe and in other regions. Uh, in, in Europe, for example, we have like a NICAPS license. We, we, you know, we, we can provide you more services than actually in Latin America for now, but that's where we are like building and working on this. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, wallet as a service solutions. So we can provide you from the front end until like all the back end and integrations, uh, our wallet service. You know, let's say you have like a, an idea of building a wallet for a specific niche and you need to provide, you know, cards for the users and you need to provide like all the payment stack. Uh, we, we have solutions for that, you know. So the differentiation, I think, is the distribution. You know, with PaySafe, for example, I can get you pretty much all over the world uh, access, you know, uh, with uh, our payment network, which is quite, quite big. You know? Got it. And got you, it. Don't, you, you, you don't get this with too many companies in the market. Got you know? it. Got it. So, so that's so of if course, you're business, Yeah, of course, there are some sure. licensing requirements, some, you know, company requirements in certain regions. Uh, but if you do your setup properly, we can provide you like pretty much payment everywhere in the world, you know? So Got it. one, one, one case, uh, for example, some, you know, uh, flight, uh, uh, companies, you know, travel companies, they, they can integrate with us and we provide all the, the payment methods all over, you know, the world and they receive you know, this payments in one central point, for example. So Got it. It, it, it like gives you capillarity and right? it like improves your distribution, uh, your access, you know, to the end user. So I think that's sure. the biggest uh, differentiation, you know. Uh, and, and also there's other, other, you know, stacks, you know, we have like all these affiliates, uh, uh, solutions, uh, like the, the wallet as a service, you know, uh, the crypto, crypto is starting to be integrated already in Europe, crypto payments, uh, the crypto payments and, and payouts. And, uh, and soon in Latin America, you know, like we're finalizing, uh, again, regulatory, you know, legal and some other aspects to, to launch the products here. But they will be em em embedded on, on the existing solutions. You know, it will not be something separate. It's just like, part of the pipe sure sure so um one other question on this then i want to i want to change the subject a little bit but um just we know that in brazil and the, the the crypto market specifically in brazil like there's there's i think mo the most of the interest in crypto in brazil is is comes as an investment an investable asset right or an alternative investment trading whatever uh, and payments is not necessarily a huge. Uh, the use case isn't very big in Brazil, specifically just because you already have picks and you already have uh, you know existing solutions that are already like pretty good. 
for for kind of like your average everyday consumer, right? So uh, I guess with that in mind, I would I would, I would just you know appreciate the color on um, like how you know what your strategy is specifically to Brazil. Like there's other countries in Latin America where like that like the you know the, the crypto payments use case maybe makes a bit more sense, but like <laughs> given in Brazil specifically. Um, how do you guys see like your sort of unique proposition uh, just given that you know the, the crypto payments use case isn't maybe the most uh, there's probably not a, gro- a lot of growth potential at least in the immediate term you know in Brazil with crypto payments specifically uh, I think not in the short term but it's uh, it's something that like for example the demand for pays and, and payouts uh, they they're growing you know so you can integrate crypto payments to the idea is actually to integrate to existing you know, Web3 uh, uh, native businesses like marketplaces, you know, uh, wallets and and a lot of all tokenization platforms, you know. Uh, the idea is actually to provide the means to, to swap this, you know, like fiat, crypto, crypto fiat. Uh, and this together with our, you know, try to find our fiat network of payments. Uh, you can start adding a lot of like extra value on that. You know, imagine that you you, you have a wallet in Brazil, uh, your wallet provider, and you need to offer like you know on off ramps. Uh, and you want to provide on off ramps in in the whole Latin America. You know, like we will be able to do that. So and you don't need to have like a local presence in each country. You know, do your banking agreements in each country. You know. Uh, so I think that's that's the the idea, you know. Uh, how can we add value again with the existing solution we have? You know, a gambling, a gaming, a, again, you know, same logic. You know, how can you uh, connect to, uh, for example, a crypto, you know, gambling websites uh, that pays, you know, like and receives in crypto. So you probably want to off ramp that to fiat or. You wanna like keep that in your wallet, you know, to trade, to buy crypto, you know, to hold. So the solution is actually uh, holistic, you know. We try to see all the areas, like not only the payment, you know, to go to a coffee shop and buy a coffee with like Bitcoin. It's it's right. It's not this exactly, you know. It's actually it's more an enabler. You know, strategy that uh, you you can connect, you can integrate with like existing, you know, an existing demand that it's it's growing. You know, it's like uh, I don't need to lecture people about right. this here. You go, you know, uh, uh, you, you see lots of studies, analyses, and and the trends. You know, uh, regulations are coming. Uh, and I think they will be good for the market, you know, uh, as long as they don't kill innovation. Uh, yeah. But I, I, looking at Brazil, that we are here, uh, I, I, I think like the central bank is doing like a great job, you know, uh, especially the uh, CBDCs, uh, uh, pilots, you know, digital, and all this idea to integrate with like these digital payments. Uh, they will all come together one time, you know. So yeah. Uh, that's that's where we we need to watch, in my opinion. You know, like how yeah. can we uh, uh, be actually uh, available for multiple, you know, areas that not necessarily will demand like crypto to buy coffee, you know, but crypto will be circulating in multiple, you know, aspects in multiple different like solutions. Uh, that you need to cross the world, you know, you need to provide actually those, uh, these needs. Uh, I believe that it will be pretty much like this. Great, great. Um, so w- with our last few minutes here, I want to uh, pivot here to talk about uh, another project that you're involved in, uh, which I think is what we, we discussed when we, the first time we met, whenever, you know, a year ago or whenever it was. Uh, this borderless money project that you've been working on oh, as yeah. uh, kind of a side project, and 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 you're an advisor, and you're still involved in the project, even though you've you're, you're obviously with PaySafe now, um, but uh, or full time. Maybe tell us a bit about yeah. uh, this project. Well, I I we launched borderless last year. I'm one of the co-founders. You know, like one of uh, one of the founders that had like the the idea. So the the objective of Borderless is uh, to 
be a DeFi for social causes, you know, a DeFi for social impact. So it's basically a DeFi platform where you can park your funds and these funds will generate like yields that will be distributed to social costs. Okay, that's that's the main idea. So why we did that? We did that because we believe that this kind of social investment needs to be transparent uh, and needs to be demo, uh, democrat. Uh, now, now you're gonna now the English. It's uh, it it needs to be more demo, democratic. Okay, it's, oh, okay. It's, uh, it, it needs. Uh, uh, for example, we noticed that uh, the, there is a lot of opportunity using borderless for small, you know, initiatives that sometimes don't they don't reach, you know, uh, some social investment funds or or even like some government support or or whatever. And in, in with this platform, we we actually can reach anyone. It's permissions. Anyone can go there, you know, can can apply. Uh, for for your cause uh initially we were actually evaluating one by one because you know anyone can go there can can put anything you, you don't actually know if it exists or not so now we're reducing our interference so we like the community is starting to vote you know for these uh, uh, guys and and actually, the the plan is is that the community itself like manages this, you know. Mm. So, Bottles now is jumping to like a second phase. We're building some uh, new new projects there. For example, we we did some NFT initiatives with uh, a crypto exchange uh, for some of the social cause to experiment how this would work, you know, because it's. It's another way to grow the TVL and also to, to help uh, uh, this cause. And now we're building our one marketplace. You know, uh, we have some support uh, from some big companies and like uh, uh, Mobi App, uh, Go uh, Go Blockchain, you know, uh, Loopy Pay. Uh, all these guys they actually contributing in the project uh, with like development integration. Uh, it's a it's a big group of like people, you know, mm. uh, that uh, we we're really trying to to understand uh, how now how can we actually grow basically the community, you know, like uh, the more we grow the TVL, more causes, more people can be impacted. So uh, it's it's pretty much this, you know. There's it's very easy to understand. Like if you understand what DeFi is. Instead yeah. of like you collecting the youths, these youths are distributed to to the social cause. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can yeah. choose uh, uh, the, the segments and all this, but they are democratically uh, distributed. Great, and then and then the causes are selected. So basically, if, if I'm if I'm a charitable cause or if I'm a charity, I would I would basically you can apply. I would apply, and then you the put information. Vote. Yeah. And yeah. then the community votes ultimately on who uh, who should re receive the funds, essentially, or there's a there's a vote yeah. of some sort, right? And then yeah, now then... now we now we are still like evaluating, we're still checking, you know, we're still like making sure that that cause exists. But the voting is is already like enabled, so you can go there, you can you know vote for the cause. But uh, the hundred percent voting process. It will come in the in the next version, probably by the end of this year. Uh, okay. That we we really like uh, rebuilding like a section that there will be a, a parking lot, you know. So when you you subscribe, you, you apply, you will be like there, and you need to bring people to to say, hey, you legit, you know. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is actually to to do not interfere in the, this project anymore. Got it. Got That's it. So the, you're, the so, you're at the, so it's, it's kind of it's kind of your your uh, it's a it's a the, kind of the Web three or the you know the the, the Web three dream I guess of like you have a, a protocol it's, built and you're kind of leaving it to the community like it's it's ready to be like uh, given to the community to sort of run and manage but the infrastructure exists. Kind of, yeah, it's a kind of endowment fund, uh, mm -hmm. but tokenizing. You know, like and, okay. and we use like public blockchain, so anyone can go there. And see all the flow, you know. We're building now also an analytics uh, page, you know. Uh, we already have it, but it's it only us uh, have access. 
but we're gonna build like a public uh, like a public explorer that you can go there and see actually what are the wallets depositing, you know how much uh, funds are being generated, to where they are going, you know. But it's uh, it's something that there is like a long curve uh, for mm -hmm. the education, you know, of what we are doing. You know, we still yeah. we still need to explain to the cause what is this. You know, most of the causes that they they never heard about crypto or Web three or blockchain. You know, before they apply it. Right. So we 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 constantly trying to you know to to educate them to teach new ones to hey you can you can make a try here you know and and it's it's a very interesting project man it's a very purpose driven you know? yeah like we're really building yeah. this because we believe that we can do something good. Uh, using blockchain and and, and the so-called web three, you know. In a, in a yeah, well, it, I feel like any any of these areas where there's a touch point, there's an obvious, uh, clear and obvious touch point with, uh, you know, the the web two world. I guess uh, in the case of uh, in your case, would be just charities or, or or social impact, social cause organizations. Yeah, that, uh, may or may not have anything to do with crypto before, but like they're like, hey, if this is an easy way, you know, easy sort of uh, uh, innovative way to 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 fund ourselves and or get more funding. Then it's like sure, sign me up. Uh, so any and it's not a donation, huh? It's not a donation platform like many others. Right, right. Like we will have like soon a donation component. Uh, you can donate directly, but it's uh, but the idea here is actually your what you deposit there, you can withdraw anytime you want. Right. So, so if I, if I draw hundred, yeah, you have a hundred yeah. USDC, you know, in a MetaMask in a wallet. Uh, that you're not using, you know, and you don't want to do DeFi, you don't want to, you're just not using. You can just deposit it there, you know, uh, this goes to a, a pool. This pool is like generating yields, you know, on Aave, for example, for now. And uh, these yields will be distributed, you know. So one day you wake up and you say, hey, I need this hundred bucks. You just go there and you withdraw. And that's okay. it. Okay. Uh, sure, like, sure. Uh, what type it's, of it's, uh, what type of like, what type that. of what, what type of yield generation strategies are you guys using, or is it are you it's, doing uh, like fairly conservative, or are you doing like crazy? We stuff extremely conservative. Spot? No, we're just using Harvey for USDC, okay, which is uh, quite low now the yields. But uh, like I said, we this first year of the project, uh, right. the project will will make like uh, one year now in in September. In August, end of this month, actually, it was launched okay. in, at Block Blockchain Rio last year. You know, ah, so yes. uh, we we actually trying to understand how can we improve things. And one of the ideas is actually soon to have uh, other stable coins and other like uh, tokens that we can accept. You know, to generate like more aggressive yields. And or to leave the user to choose that, you know, we're going to give the options and the guy will say, yeah, you can be aggressive with my funds and that just go ahead. So, sure, but for sure. now, we actually, it, it's, we're still in the learning curve. Like I said, we're still experimenting, you know, we, yeah. we, we couldn't like uh, afford to be too aggressive now. You know? Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a USDC pool on Avi. It's pretty much what we're using now. Uh, but we are already like exploring other other ways. We're launching now to a liquidity mining, you know, because we have like a, a, a token uh, for the gov governance, uh, which is bond. It's already listed on on Uniswap, and the idea is that the token holders can can vote and like if you if you have bond on the wallet, you can actually participate in the community. And and the idea of the liquidity mining it's actually to to compensate this this you know uh, this community and also to improve our TVL. So we don't want to depend on on the community only uh, to actually grow this this uh, pool, you know, for the cause. And some some many other initiatives that we have that are like happening, you know. And but I believe that it's something that could be replicated to so many areas. You know, for example, I was speaking with some people uh, that I'm a project that I'm advising. Uh, it's uh, for decentralized science, 
uh, and they could use the same logic for that, you know, to finance, you know, uh, I don't know, PAGs. And so it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very good and transparent to, way to use, you know, crypto and blockchain because yeah. you, you, it's, it's all there. You know? like, yeah. If, if thinking, if we think you're not doing what we say, you just go to the Explorer and you check yourself. So it's yeah. uh, very transparent. I mean, it's a great. It's a great area. I, I mean, I mean, when I when I was, uh, I think I did a paper on this when I was in college. Like this whole idea of of uh, they call it like the ice cube effect of 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 donations, right? So like or like foreign aid or these things that you know the the aid gets distributed by a certain the donor, and then by the time it goes through all these different inter intermediaries, and then by the time it gets to the actual like recipient, it's like you know it starts as an ice cube, and by the time it gets to the recipient, it's like a tiny little drop of water, right? Because there's so much like kind of intermediaries there taking, is, uh, but you don't really have any is, idea of like uh, where, where where is your fund exactly going, right? That's, that's, that's the point. Yeah, that's, uh, I think like with re regulations and uh, institutional adoption, you know, growing, we will open more opportunities for borderless, for example, to attract capital from this social investment funds, you know, that sometimes yeah. they, they sit on the cash for months, you know, until they actually go to the final destination. So why not parking in a solution like borderless, you know, in a protocol like borderless? Uh, yeah. So why are they not doing anything with that? They can generate, you know, yields for other costs that maybe don't reach these guys, you know? So we've yeah. been exploring this possibility. We spoke with some uh, uh, endowment funds in the US, uh, uh, some big institutional funds, uh, charity funds too. Uh, but especially in the U.S., man, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, a tough sell like right now. Waiting to, <laughs> yeah. Like, how can I get my dollars convert to a stable coin and leave there? And then, you know, so it's, uh, I think this, 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 uh, uh doubts and these questions, they will be answered soon. So it's, I Great. think it's part of, you know, natural maturity of, of this market. We are, you know, you yeah. just need to yeah, be yeah, patient yeah. And, and keep rolling. Keep yeah, yeah, no, that's inspiring work you guys are doing. So that, that's very cool. I like, and I especially like the idea of, um, you know, there's. I think the the killer, like, sort of the key feature of this, at least in my view, would be just the fact that you know it's not a donation platform like you, like you emphasize, right? Yeah. You're not just donating ten thousand dollars. Like you're just putting ten thousand dollars into this protocol, and then the yield is what's getting donated. Uh, yeah, you're not, the you know, you're, you're you're get you can get your money back at any point you want, right? So it's like I'm I'm donating my yield to this cause. I'm not necessarily donate. I don't necessarily have to donate the ten thousand dollars. Like I, I guess I could do that, but like I don't necessarily have to, right? So I think that's that's yeah, we, what we, it's an interesting differentiation. I think than you know versus these the other other types of of charitable funding models. I think we validated the idea actually when we saw uh, the amount of USDC parked on you know wallets in, on Polygon, for example. That's the the blockchain we use. And I don't remember the exact number now, but it's like millions, you know, it's, uh, uh, there's even a website now that you can check on this, but it's, uh, it's quite interesting if we capture like a small percentage, because it's already a lot of, you know, uh, money that could be being used to do good, could be helping a lot of people. So, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, just even thinking uh, about my wallets, like just how, how much, how many, you know, how much USDC do I have just sitting around in my wallets? You know, like I couldn't even, it's, it's been sort of, you know, a lot of these things, it's like, okay, it's not really enough to go and try to, you know, I don't have enough, not enough. And it's risk free. You know, yeah. Go, it's like, yeah, risk free. Kind of yeah, risk free. Yeah. It's, uh, we don't touch in any of like the, the contracts are there, you know, like they're doing the job. There's no yeah. like backdoor or anything. They all audited and, and like you, you just park there. And, you, you yeah. change your mind tomorrow you just take it out that's fine yeah no very cool very cool um well anyway we're both running out of time here but um just want to turn it back to you leandro for any final thoughts on either paysafe or, or or the borderless project you're working on uh and then where can folks get in touch with you uh if they want to get uh if they want to learn more or if they just want to you know get in touch with you about either of these projects well i can be found on linkedin i think it's uh where i i'm more active uh uh, trying to exercise my writing skills and and, <laughs> and actually um you've been po you've been doing I'm, some good posts lately it's uh you've been posting some good content i've been following oh man thanks more. man yeah, yeah i've been good. i've been like 
personally interested a lot on this like CBDC movements and uh, infrastructure and especially on the interoperability side, like how interoperability will play like a, a proper role on that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so looking at uh, the CIP a lot, ZKs, you know, I have been studying quite quite a lot about that because I believe that we need uh, interoperability will be actually the key for for the growth, you know, for the massive uh, growth of like blockchain uh, mm -hmm. uh, usage and especially on the thread five. You know? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, well, final considerations. Thanks, you know. Again, uh, I think you you do a like a great job, uh, man. I I subscribe your newsletter. We we in some groups together. You know, you know, like we. I, I make a joke sometimes. It's like uh, the blockchain mafia you know, in Brazil. It's like. Uh, it's, a small group of 30, 40 people that it's like uh, everywhere. You know, we everywhere. We uh, Everywhere you go, you find like the same people. Yeah, but it, the community is growing now. Huh? Uh, yeah, we, we have, we've been through a cleanup. You know, there was a, like a cleanup, I think, this year. Uh, a lot of people uh, realized that it's not just to make like a JPEG, publish on, you know, open key, and you'll be like the next uh, millionaire. So it doesn't work like that. But my advice is actually keep studying, keep building, you know, and try to understand actually out of the gray zones what is working, you know. This is something that mm -hmm. I've been paying a lot of attention. What from from everything that is happening, what it's really like working, you know, what is it standing still? You know, it's a lot of, a lot of use cases that man, you look at and said, okay, this maybe will last like six months, one year, but something else will come and destroy it. So it's, uh, I think we need to understand these trends, man, what is fundamentally strong to grow, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a good uh, time for, for introspection in that in that regard, like what is actually real and what's what's just fluff, right? Uh, definitely a lot of the latter. Yeah, keep pushing, man. Keep pushing. It, it's like every, every new cycle of like uh, a technology that comes, you know? It was like this in the 90s with the internet. You know, it was in the mobile internet, you know, the, the mobile app spoon and all this. You had these waves, you know. But like I see really blockchain and, and crypto as uh, uh, infrastructure, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I really don't don't see as like many things that people like say, play, uh, sell, you know, market. I just see as like a good infrastructure that it will still evolve a lot, you know. We, yeah. even if like DLTs are there for a while and even blockchains but we are now we, it, we it's picking up like new people that it's thinking hey wh what else I can build with that you know how can I connect all those dots you know so right I'm, right right I'm, I think it's a long way we still have like a long way to build stuff yeah absolutely yeah well, thanks for those final thoughts um, definitely definitely resonate with me so appreciate that uh, it's great having you on the show, Leandro. And um, be sure to tell, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, that you're, uh, one of your colleagues uh, that you work closely with is actually from the, the same town as me and rural North America. Oh, okay. And uh, we'll, tell give him him a shout. We'll, give, we'll give Mike a shout out here. We're, we're, so we're both from I'll like tell. the same tiny town in Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, we're both, we're, we both work in crypto and we're both married to Brazilians. So <laughs> it's like, we both, yeah. Very very strong coincidence. So we'll give a shout out to Mike. I give him some love. Here. I would tell I would tell uh, him that I just <laughs> recorded a podcast with you. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but thank you for your time, Leandro. Uh, always a pleasure chatting. And uh, man, always, always a pleasure to talk to you too. Huh? Alrighty, and uh, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time.